Hey, it's Greg DeWire. It's been years. In fact, I think it's been four years since we've done a live show at Mindful Conversations. Today, my guest is a good friend of mine. This should be easy. His name is Chris Langle. He's a magician, and we're going to talk about focus and misdirection. Chris, thank you so much for being on the podcast and the broadcast. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> yeah, it's been a, a long time since we did the show together, huh? Yeah, so what have you been doing the last couple of years? I know you've been busy, but what exactly have you been focusing on? Well, where did we leave off when we uh, when we did the show last time? I don't even remember. Me I've, either, I, if I'm being completely honest with you, because the pandemic hit and everything kind of went crazy. But, I mean, let's see. We've uh, I've done a tour. I've done two tours, theater tours. Oh, great. I've done uh, a gig at Lake Compounds. That was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And now I'm embarking on a new tour called the IPA tour. What does Illusion that stand for? Plus alcohol. Oh, wait a minute. Are you going to be intoxicated while no, you're doing no, the show? No, 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 no. So I am doing shows <laughs> at breweries okay. all over New England, New York, Pennsylvania, wow. uh, Jersey, Delaware. Wow. I mean, we're going from like March to as long as I can get it. Excellent. And uh, I just kind of got the idea because I, I did a show at Two Roads Brewery back in November and it worked out so well. It was all adults. And I, I got to be me. No filters. Right. No having to watch out because there's kids in the audience. Right. It was it was fantastic. And the success that I had from that show, I just kind of took it and went with it. And I was like, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to focus on this, and I'm going to see where it brings me. Right. I sent out emails. I made the mistake of kind of emailing every brewery in New York and New England. And what happened? Well, about a hundred of them got back to me and I was like, whoa, hold on. I'm not used to being this popular. <laughs> and uh, yes, yeah, so we, we put a tour together. So we've got, geez, almost every weekend from March to May filled up weekdays, Saturdays, Sundays, Fridays, even some Tuesdays. That's amazing. So you, yeah. you can't you can't market everybody. You can't talk to everybody. So how did you get the idea to just focus on this one niche? Like, how did that come to you? Oh, well, I'm very good at close-up magic. Okay. I got really uh, burnt out doing kids' birthday parties, and I decided last year, I was like, I'm not doing them anymore. Right. You know, it's not where I feel comfortable. It's not where I could perform at my best. Right. So when I started looking into restaurants and bars and stuff, luckily I ran into the people at Two Roads. I actually marketed to them for one of the, I think it was a summer event that they did. Mm -hmm. And they brought me in. The people there loved me so much. I was like, what if I came back and just did around the tap room? And it ended up being so wildly successful. I pitched them a show. We did the show. And I was, I realized, I was like, I've been doing this 17 years now. Mm -hmm. And now I figure out what I'm good at, you know? So it's the adult zone right is where i is where i belong yeah i i think you can't do everything i know there's a lot of people that they want to be everything to everybody they want to be a jack of all trades mm -hmm. or they want to reach all people i mean maybe you do one or two things but if you can figure out exactly who you are and that took you some time mm -hmm. and then you can figure out who wants to purchase what you have that's a great that's a great connection yeah well what's the saying it's good to know a little bit of everything than a lot of nothing yeah. I think that's the saying. I'm not yeah. sure exactly how it goes. Don't quote me on right. that. Right. But I mean, you know, if somebody went to your website and saw that you did face painting and you were a stand-up comedian, juggler, magician, close-up, and you also did birthday parties, they probably wouldn't take you that seriously. It's not that they wouldn't take me that seriously. It's the fact of somebody would hire me for little Jimmy's eighth birthday party and then the next week, I'm at a nightclub doing close-up magic, taking shots and, right. you know, being my true self. And then, you know, there's a huge difference. Right. And one of them, granted, it's okay. Mm -hmm. The other one is really good as far as comfortable, you know, tendencies and, you know, being just there in right. the moment. Right, right. And you realize that you enjoy one thing more than you enjoy another. And in my opinion, I feel like you, if you find your niche, you got to go after it. Right. You don't waste your time. If you're a, if you're a, a pianist, don't learn how to play the cello. I mean, unless you want to. Right. Focus on the piano. Right. If you are an artist and you paint uh, fine art pieces out of acrylics, don't go into pottery unless you want to. Right. So I feel like if you want to go and branch out, go ahead. But 
while you're branching out, eventually you're going to find the thing that you're really good at. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to go laser focus right in on that. And that's where you're going to stay. Yeah, And I also think it, I, I agree with you. I think it's the 80, 20 rule, you know, whatever you're doing out there, where you're focused is probably going to bring you the most reward. Yeah, you know, I, I agree. You know, you'll, you'll get agree. other, you know, other people say, well, hey, would you also do this? Would you do a wedding show? Would, you know, you'll get other business. But in reality, yeah. when you focus all of your attention, and the other thing is branding. Like, who is, and I'm talking about the entertainer here, who is Chris Langle? Like, if you had to describe your brand, like who you are, are you edgy? Are you funny? Are you sarcastic? Are you, who, who are you as a performer? I mean, I don't really think about it that much because, like, the character, Chris mm. Langle Magic, as opposed to me. Right. You know, Well, me, they, they seem to be the same. Yeah, but I, I would say my character is a little bit more, like, on top of, you know, the crowd control and a little bit more outgoing and stuff. Like, right. I tell people, once the rings and the fedora go on, I'm in character. <laughs> These come off, and I'm just regular Chris. Oh, okay. But I, I would say that I am more of a... Uh, witty, sarcastic, in yep. your face. Yep. Uh, I'm going to become the center of attention and you're going to like it <laughs> and you're going to pay for it. Right. That's the kind of entertainer I think I am. Yeah, and that, that'll keep you out of the kids' market for a while. Yes, it will. <laughs> yes, it will. So, so show me a trick. Tr show me some sleight of hand. Show me something that... Uh... So will amaze me. I'll show you something really simple, and let's get that camera right there. Okay, All right, I'm looking sure. at the monitor. So, Greg, I'm going to have you take a card out. Any card any I want. You want. Right, I don't want to see what it is. All right, I'm going to go all the way down here. That's fine. That's fine. Right. Take a look at now, it. Now, can I show the yeah, camera? Yeah, show the camera. And I'm no, actually going to look if, this if way I, so I don't see the monitor. If I show the camera, you're not going to look, right? Okay. So let me see if I can get it in screen. Yeah, I got it in screen. There we go. We'll see the right. card. Now I have to give it back to you. Yep. So I'm going to take the card. Just make sure you see what that is. All right. I'm going to put it into the deck like this. We're actually going to give it a nice little shuffle. So that way the cards are truly mixed into each other. Look at that. That's actually nice. That is nice. That's what you call a Pharaoh shuffle. And I mean, as you can see, all of these cards are different. I'll, I'll even show the camera that mm -hmm. all of these cards are in fact different. Now, I mean, you know, the typical magician will be like, "Oh, I think, uh, I, I think this is your card." Uh, it's close, but it's, it's not. It's close, but it's it's not your card. No. Uh, instead, what I do is I try to add a little bit of pizzazz to it. So I go like this. There you go, the nine of diamonds. Oh, nice. But that's not the whole trick, though. Greg, hold your hand out, nice and flat. We're going to take the nine of diamonds. Does everybody see that right there? We're going to take it. We're going to put it right here in the hand. Greg, don't move, okay? I won't. I'm going to use a random card. I'm going to say this card right here. So this is the king of clubs, okay? The king of clubs, watch. Did you see it? No. You didn't see it? Not really. It's what was it happened so fast. Look, now I've got the nine. You've got the king. Take a look. Oh, my goodness. See? <laughs> that, that's great. And I, I mean, you can only see the stuff if you see me live. I, I and you're here live. You know, that was very impressive. I really like that. Now, how long you've been doing that? Like, just that? Has that been something you've been doing for a while? or? Well, card magic I've been doing for 18 years. Okay. I so. mean, there was a point in time where there wouldn't be a day where I wouldn't have cards on me. I've left the house without my phone in my wallet and have still had a deck of cards in my pocket. So let me tell you a story. About two years ago, I'm at a wedding. And I meet two people that you know. I won't mention their names right oh, now. We know who they are. <laughs> and all of a sudden, they start talking about this magician who is a sleight of hand expert. And I look at, you know, this is Chris and Pete. You it know, wasn't. It wasn't Budget the Clown, was it? No. And okay. And I said, he'll never let you down. And I said, sleight of hand expert in Connecticut. And they said, Chris Langle. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Yeah. So when I think of your branding, that's what I think of. Like I don't think of you. You know, hanging off of a building, doing a straight jacket. Though I know you do a straight jacket. I do. Uh, I don't think of you as a escape artist per se, though you've done things like that. And I certainly don't think of you as a child entertainer. But I think of you as a sleight of hand guy. I I think that's your strength. So you want to know a funny story about what you just said? Okay. Is I heard the other end of the story. Oh, you did. So. <laughs> so how we're, true? We're talking how about true was our it? friends Pete and Chris, yeah. who you've had on the podcast, yes, and yeah. hopefully we can get them here in the studio. Yeah, that would be. Fun. They called me that night. Did they? And they're like, some guy named Greg Dwyer said he knows you. And I'm like, you guys met Greg? It's like, yeah, he was officiating the wedding that we're at. I'm like, where were you? Pete's like, the buffet. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it turns out it's a very small world because they were DJing that wedding. Yes, yes. 
Yeah. You were there officiating it, or is it officiating? Yeah, you got it. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And they had, n- you guys had never met. No, no. And it turns out that they knew me, you knew me, and it's but, like, but the connection was sleight of hand. Exactly. And when I exactly. said sleight of hand, they said Chris Lango. Yeah. I said, you know Chris? They said, yeah. Exactly. So, uh, and, and that makes me feel really good, by the way. So uh, when I think of your branding, that's what I think of. I mean, I've seen you do a lot of things. But I've also seen you do close up and cards. And now, do you just focus on cards, or do you focus on coins? When it comes mainly to mainly cards, mainly cards, mainly cards, which is I, pretty easy. I could do car, uh, coins. I could do mentalism. I could do a little bit of like. Uh, I could do escapes. I do right. stupid stunts. Right. All of this you could see at the show, and uh, I've found that it's very easy to entertain people for a long period of time with just a deck of cards. Right. And it makes it even more impressive when it's not my deck of cards. I just did a uh, close-up performance, and they had a deck of cards. Mm-hmm. And you could tell it was it was a beat-up deck. It was literally, it came out of a poker set. And I'm like, can I borrow those? And they're like, yeah. And I did a half hour right. of, like, great sleight of hand. And my cards were still in my pocket. That's great. And then when I was done, I handed them the deck, and I said, hey, thank you. Okay, so... Why did you get into this versus why are you in it now? So what was your first impression? For me, I can think of a magician that did some linking rings thing or something happened. My uncle showed me a coin trick. But what's your backstory? Was it a magic kit? Did you see somebody on television? What was, what was going on there? So my mother called me into her room one day after I got out of school. I was about sixth or seventh. I think it was seventh grade. Yeah, it was seventh grade. It was 2006, just before my grandfather had passed away. And uh, she calls me into a room. She says, I got to show you something. That weird guy's on TV again. And I'm like, weird guy? Who was it? I walk into the room, and I see a man physically walking on water across a pool in Uh, Las Vegas. Okay. And I saw the women he had and the cars he was driving, the money he was making, the exclusivity he had out in Vegas. This, by the way, was Chris Angel. Oh, I explained this on another television show, the people who don't know who Chris Angel is. If you were to take David Copperfield and Spencer's in the mall and combine them, there oh, you go. There you go. That's you know, a good so explanation. You, you know, or Hot Topic or something like that. But, I mean, Chris Angel was a household name back in the early 2000s. And right. I, it got to the point, Greg, I grew my hair out like him. I, right. I wore, I bought jewelry that looked like him. I was stealing his pattern. I wanted to be Chris Angel. Right. Ironically, you know, a couple of years later, I was at Mind Freak Live at the casino with Foxwoods, and I got to perform for his family. How did that happen? Was that after the show? I talked myself into it. I went up to the to the, the merchandise booth, and I'm looking at the t-shirts and all the cards, and all of a sudden you hear, oh, yeah, I'm so glad you like my brother. And I did one of these. I'm like, huh? Is that J.D.? And it turns out it was J.D. It was Chris's older brother, J.D. I, I met him in Great Mahegan guy. Sun. Great yeah, guy. Yeah. And, um... So I was like, can I show you a magic trick? He's like, absolutely. You can show me something. Here, come around to the other side of the table. Let's film this. And I'm like. No way. I'm like in my glory Did you right get now. the film of it? I got it. Yeah, oh, I didn't. I, got I don't it. know if I've and, ever seen it. And that. it's funny because I it popped up on my Facebook feed like as a memory like a couple days ago. But um, that was the night that Chris Angel lost an earring during the show. He, he did a trick where he disappeared on stage and he ended up in the crowd. And I right. guess during that, he lost like a $25,000 thousand dollar earring no way i offered to go and help them find it and i was like you don't have to pay me i just want to meet chris and they're like no 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 we've got it we've got it and i'm like trying to like beg my did way did you get your it. way in i did not get my oh, way in I, to right. this day i have not met chris angel but i could say that he's the guy who got me into this stuff and then you know you branch out you i learned about david blaine david copperfield uh i knew about harry houdini but you uh, learn about you know uh Let's see, Siegfried and Roy, Penn and Teller, right. Mac King, right. somebody that you know. Right, right. And you find out that, okay, well, television magic is one thing, but then you've got close-up magic. Right. You've got stage magic. You've got mentalism. You've got duo magic. You've got uh, seance magic. Right. You've got psychology. There's so much out there that I didn't know sure. because I was just focused in on one thing. So I branched out. Now, at one time, weren't you focused on wrestling, pro wrestling? Well, there was something there that I remember a few years I ago. Am, I am an 
avid pro wrestling fan. As a matter of fact, when we're done here, because it's Monday night, I'm going home and watching Raw. Okay. Um, so okay. how did you take both Magic and wrestling? Because I think you were looking I, to combine I, them at one yeah, time I wasn't what? looking to combine them. I was looking more as like inspiration. So okay. uh, years ago, I, I was training to be a pro wrestler. Okay. And then I realized I can talk a lot better than a lot of the guys there. <laughs> okay. And a lot of the stuff was what you call a shoot. It was, you know, from the hip. It was all off the top of your head. And with wrestling, you have to be able to play off of a crowd. And whether you're a baby face, which is the good guy, you have to get the crowd to like you. Right. But it's so much easier to get the crowd to hate you if you're a heel, which is the bad guy. Right. And I was a heel. So I had to learn when people are saying, boo, get out of here. Your guy, you know, I'm not going to say everything that they would say. This is a PG show. Um and it turns out that I actually learned that I was very good at firing that stuff back. So years later, I started taking my promo abilities. Promo was where you're trying to get yourself or whoever you're managing over. Right. I took that ability to be able to think on my feet and I took it to the stage. And now I can go up onto a stage and do an hour long set with no script, no bullet points, nothing. I just go up and I wing it. But I found a lot of inspiration in guys like you know, Paul Heyman, Jesse the Body Ventura, uh, you know, the guys that were in the business, The Rock, you know, mm -hmm. the guys that were in the business that you knew as a talker. Mm -hmm. Because I would see them and I'm like, they know how to play a crowd. They know how to control a crowd. Right, right. And once they've got that flow going, you can't stop them. Right, so that's right. that's kind of how I integrated it. And plus, I walk out when I'm doing my magic shows with a big title belt because I'm, I'm a mark. <laughs> so. <laughs> so let's talk about the philosophy of magic. It's it's really misdirection. Like It is. I don't know what you're doing with those cards and how they, they change places, but obviously you're misdirecting me or you're getting me to think in a certain way that isn't necessarily the right way. Have you studied the philosophy of magic? Have you looked into why people are fooled? I find it fascinating. Like, you know, why are people being manipulated or... I, I have, Okay. but I haven't looked too much into it mm -hmm. because I feel like if I look too much into it, it's going to get confusing. Mm -hmm. I know why people are fooled. Why? Let's talk about that. Why Be are people fooled? Because if you fool one, you can fool a whole bunch. Have you ever heard of the Sky Pointing uh, Project? Sky... Pointing? The Sky Pointing Project. No, so no. there was a man out in New York City years ago, and he stood out in the middle of Times Square, looked up, and pointed. That's it. Just That's look, all he just, did. Just looked up. And then the next thing you know, there were 20 to 30 people surrounding him looking at where he was pointing. Just like I look now. Just like you look now. Guess what he was pointing at? What? Nothing. Okay. You know why? Why? Because it's very easy to manipulate a bunch of people in a group. Right. Right. And at that point, if you think about it, he could have done anything he wanted because everybody's misdirected. Everybody's mm -hmm. looking up where he wants him to look. Right. Harry Blackstone Jr. used to say that I can make an elephant appear on stage right in front of a crowd with all the lights on and nobody will see me do it. And you know what he did? No, tell He us. would go out to the corner of the stage and do a cup and ball routine or a cut and restored rope routine. While everybody's looking at Harry Blackstone... His assistants are walking a 5,000-pound elephant right onto the center of the stage. Next thing you know, he goes, poof, there it is. They never saw it. So you're telling me that people's misdirection can be so powerful that they won't see an elephant walk on Absolutely. stage? Absolutely, as long as you do it the right <coughs> way. If you have something that it doesn't really convince them, but if it's intriguing enough enough people will focus in on it and then they lose sight of others and we were talking off air you were telling a story about a pickpocket oh right right so i've traveled to israel i've traveled to europe many times and you asked me the question before we went on camera are there pickpockets in israel well mm. first of all they're in every city i mean it's new york city it's washington dc but yeah when we used to go to Israel and Tel Aviv and places in the Middle East and it's nothing against a specific area of the country because you can see this happening in New Haven you can see it anywhere but where there's a lot of tourists people are this is what people are doing they're looking you know they're looking over here to take a picture and they don't realize they put their pocketbook down or they 
they did something or we, this is what happened. We were on a trip and we were in, I think we were in Bethlehem. We were in the West Bank and we were getting on a bus. Everyone was getting on the bus. And I said to this gentleman who was from Lincoln, Nebraska, I said, you really need to get on the bus. When he gets on the bus, he realizes his money's gone because what happened, Chris, was he was misdirected by people that were trying to sell him a dollar flute. Ah. In the middle of that, people took their money. So yeah, it does, it does happen. It's funny you say that because I was watching clips of Harry Houdini when he was doing the straight jacket escape above New York City. Yeah, yeah. And there was a comment on there that said pickpockets must have loved when he went up into the air. Oh, really? Because everybody's looking up at Houdini. Oh, my goodness. People can come in. They're all misdirected. Have you seen that painting of the cups and balls? Do you know what I'm talking about? I have. Okay, so for the viewers, there's uh, a table, and there's a magician at the table doing these you know, cups and balls, which is an old ancient magic trick. And then there's a guy in the audience reaching forward to take you know, whatever the person yep. has. So it's misdirection. Yep. It, it, and, and believe it or not, it's still done. It is. And three card lot, Monty? Three think? card Monty. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people actually don't even know how three card Monty so really explain, works. So explain three card Monty. You're not going to give it away, are you? I'm not okay. going to give it away, but I'm going to give you kind of like how they manage to win all the time. Okay. Because I've seen it happen. Okay. Three card Monty is a multi-person scam. So you've got so the you, guy. So now you are giving it away. No, not so, necessarily. I'm not giving it away. Uh, I'm okay. giving it away without giving it okay. away. Okay. You're talking about So it's multi? a multi-person scam. Yeah, two okay. people working so you, together. No, it's actually more like four. Are, is it really? Yeah. So you've got the guy at the table. you got the guy That's at the table. That's the guy who knows the sleight of hand. Okay. He's the one that everybody's looking at. Right. Then you've got a guy who is sitting there losing. Right. Oh, losing. Then you've got another guy who was sitting there winning. Right. So that's three people. Yep. Then you've got an antagonizer. <laughs> so basically what's going on is you've got the guy is doing the cups and balls or the three card Monty or the shell and the P game or whatever they're doing. And the one guy who's supposed to lose puts his money down. He loses. Then their buddy puts the money down. He wins. He lets them win a couple of times. Well, Joe over here is going to be like, wait a minute. So he just lost, but he won. There might be a chance. And then you've got another guy who's in the audience saying, you should give it a shot. I bet you could tell where it is. And then they're watching the guy win. They're watching this guy lose. The guy who's the mark is like, come on, man. I know exactly what's going on. Next thing you know, he loses the deed to his house. Right. Because they're all in on it. Right. So the guy who loses his money doesn't lose money. It just goes into the pot. Right, right. They're working together. So I don't want to bring this up, but I am going to bring this up. Oh, boy. So if this is a scam and we know that people are easily misdirected, and I'm putting you on the spot because we didn't rehearse this, what do you think about our world today and marketing and just commercials and propaganda as far as getting people to focus on just one message? Because let's face it, we're all living in these these echo chambers of reality. You know, if you believe this or you believe that or you believe this, all you have to do is hear the message over and over mm -hmm. again that you don't hear another person's point of view, right? You know where I'm going with this, right? I I'm can't give you what I really think the, because your show will get canceled. Oh, okay. Well, it's, it's public but, television, but you know what I'm saying? But These techniques are being yeah, used on, on people as far as the masses and the general population. Have you ever heard the saying, if somebody told you to jump off a bridge, would you? My mother said that when a I was a kid. The majority of the people these days would. Okay. As long as the right person is telling them to jump off that It, it reminds me of Darren Brown. Have you watched his videos? I love Darren okay. Brown. So, you know, he's got these things where he's hypnotizing people and he's getting people to either push him off a building mm -hmm. or to kill somebody. Mm -hmm. And he's using mind control. He's using focus. He's using misdirection. It's scary. Now, it you're really just is. you're an entertainer, so you're doing it for fun. But if you wanted to go to the dark side and be a con artist and set up a table in Boston or New York, you could make money by, by stealing money from people. Yeah, but I have too high of morals to do that. Right. And I know that not everybody is stupid. Right. You know, Darren Brown plays on one extremely sensitive part of the human anatomy. What is that? Emotion. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because as long as you can get somebody to feel a certain way, mm -hmm. they'll do something. Mm -hmm. Whether it has to do with what they believe in, whether it has to do with morals, whether it has to do with money. If you get somebody to feel a certain way, eventually they're going to do what somebody else tells them to do. Right. right. That's why some people are basically the voice of the voiceless, you know, mm -hmm. because you got one person and hey, guess what? 
I like what he's doing. I like what he's saying. I think he says something in a very articulate way as opposed to this guy over here. I'm going to follow that guy. Well, guess what? He gets enough people behind him. He starts doing all of this stuff the way he does it. Next thing you know, there's the bridge. <laughs> okay. I don't want to get political, so show me another I trick. I wasn't trying to no, get political. But, but, you know, but I love the concept <laughs> that mind control, sleight of hand, yeah. sleight of mouth, focus, yeah. misdirection. It's not just at a parlor show, no, it's but not. I, I want to see another trick. I want to see. So what do you got for me? Got, right. We got about five minutes We have left. about five minutes. Yeah, That's the, perfect. There you so go. Uh, can, we get the, can we get the wide camera oh, on yeah, let's here? Go wide. I don't need it to yeah, be there on you go. Me. We got wide. Mainly because uh, the entire time, Greg, even before we went on the air, I've had this deck of cards up here. I know. That. So, I was going to ask you what that was all about. So, Greg, what I want you to do is I want you to imagine a deck of cards in front of you. Imagine that they're all floating and they're all facing you, okay? And you've got all the, the, the kings, the queens, the red cards, the black cards, the clubs, the hearts, the spades, the diamonds. Imagine one card floating towards you. Focus on that one card. Card. It's coming towards it's me. It's coming right towards you. All right. I want you to focus on it. Okay. I want you to focus on what the, the 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 shape is. I want you to focus on the suit of it. I want you to think about the number or the letter, whatever it is. Okay. okay I got it. You got it. All right. I got it. No problem. I'm gonna. Take and we a, didn't work this. No, out. we didn't. Like no, you did no, not no, no. prop me. But, or, but I want you to think of it. So so you got the number. Are you trying to manipulate? No, me? I'm not. Oh, okay. No, no. I'm just showing you. I've got nothing in the hands. Uh, I mean, are you? Nope. Okay. Nope. 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 Because if I wanted to, I could say ten of diamonds. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can't believe that's what I was thinking. That's of. what you were no, thinking. No, 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 no. That's not. I hope so. Like <laughs> but um, you could but, have but been now, right. But now what I want you to do is imagine that card that's floating in front of you. I want you to imagine it turning around. Okay. So it's face down, and then I, it goes back into the face up packet. Gotcha. Squares all up, goes into a box. Got it. So now you've got a deck of cards with a face down card in it. I have it in my head. What was the card? Three of diamonds. Three of diamonds. Now it's very interesting because that card, that deck of cards has been up here the whole time. No way. So all Greg, right. what if I told you? What if I told you? And you could see they're all they're all different, right? You can yeah, see yeah, that yeah. right there. Yeah, they're all different. What if I told you, Greg, that there is one card in here that is upside down? Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, take it, take it, take it. Let me it. see. Yeah, right there. Take All a right. Look. So, what are you telling me? So, what I'm saying is, <laughs> if you focused on one card, even after I tried manipulating you, and it was the three of diamonds. Oh my gosh! It is the three of diamonds. That's wonderful. That is great. So, Chris, thank you so much. I no really. Problem, so, Brian. if if people want to find out what you're doing. Um, how do they reach you? Because I know you're on, what do you want, Instagram? I'm on Instagram, oh TikTok, okay. YouTube, and Google uh, Plus for the four people that still use that. And <laughs> Facebook, www.chrislanglemagic.com slash IPA. Okay. That's the main site that we're working on right now. If you want to go and see my show, that's where you go. If you want any more information, you want to find out a little bit more, you go to www.chrislanglemagic.com or follow me at Chris Langle Magic. Excellent. Well, I, I appreciate you talking about this topic of magic and misdirection. Uh, thank you that you... Wait a minute, did you take my wallet? I don't think you did take my wallet. Oh, no, you, supposed to find out you about did not that. take my wallet. But no, the fact that you're doing ethical entertainment you're entertaining people you're using magic for good uh and uh people love what you're doing and uh where do you see yourself in five ten years doing the same thing or doing the same thing just in more places with bigger audiences well what are we talking madison square garden what are we talking the New York garden City? is the ultimate goal madison square garden is my life goal okay so we're so. going to put that out there just like you put the three of diamonds out mm -hmm. there. And, and here's what I'm predicting, is if you keep on focusing on it and narrowing down your focus, that's what you're going to get. So Right there. Anyway, so thank you so much. Thank you for watching Mindful Conversations. Chris, thank you so much. We'll catch you next time. See you later. Be great. Be focused. Be focused. Be great.